A while back I brewed two beers with completely different ingredients, but I was hoping they'd come out to be more or less the same style. The first beer was an all grain recipe. And then the second one was an extract. Well, I brewed them up and tasted them. The all grain, the color was exactly what I was hoping for and the taste was on point. Extract, it was too dark in appearance and the taste was just a little too roasty. But today I'm gonna revisit this and try to get this right. I think I've got a, a fun one today. So last time that I tried all grain versus extract to get a similar style beer, just didn't work out. But I am back and I'm looking for redemption. So I have got an all grain beer and uh, well, the steeping grains for an extract beer. It is a German Heller's beer. And I'm going to try to put right what once went wrong and to just explain the things that I'm gonna do different this time based on all the wonderful advice in the, uh, in the YouTube comments. Well, let's head back to the light board. So for my Hellas, I've got a few ideas on how I can brew two beers that are gonna be closer in style to one another. So first of all, I'm gonna be using the same water salts in both batches. So not just plain old tap water now, but I will use the same water salts with both. Same pH, same sulfite to chloride ratio, everything should be the same. Now, secondly, my base malts are gonna match this time. I'm going to be using Pilsen malt for both of these beers. And I'm gonna switch out the LME for DME. Even though I had my heating element off, I rather suspect that I scorched the LME last time, leading to some of those unexpected roastier flavors. And then finally, I'm gonna use the same specialty malt, Carapils, in both of these batches. And what I'm hoping here is that this will mean I end up with an all grain beer and an extract beer that are much closer in appearance, much closer in aroma and much closer in taste. You know, this is a ambition realized, getting to use my works light board for a beer video. So two brewing systems, I've got my regular claw hammer, 10 gallon, Brew in a bag electric system on my left here. And on my right, I've got the Clawhammer starter system just on an electric heat plate. And that's where I'm going to make my extract. Now this is going to be a full volume extract or very close to full volume, just one gallon short of full volume. I'll explain why in a moment. Um, but I've heated both of these up to around 152 Fahrenheit. And I'm going to add water salts into both of these. So I have gypsum, Epsom salt and calcium chloride, same amount measured for each of these to give a neutral water profile. All right, now I'm gonna add in my grains for the all grain for the mashed rest. And yeah, the water here is 152 Fahrenheit or 67 Celsius. Just steeping grains going into the extract here. I'm using the same basket that I'm using for that, uh, but a much more modest amount of grains. This water is around mm, 153, 154, something like that. So I'm just going to mash this or steep this, I guess, in that grain basket. And I'm gonna leave it for the same amount of time in both of these systems. So this one's just going to sit here and this one's going to recirculate for about an hour. Okay, that's one hour. Time to pull the grains. I'm thinking this one shouldn't be too hard. Pops time, and I am using Tetnang for both of these beers. 
this is just the bettering hot that's all I'm using today. This will go in uh, right at the start and I'm expecting about 18 IBU from this. Uh, both of these are heating up. Uh, I've maxed this thing out. It's probably going to take a bit longer than my 240 volts. So as soon as they start to boil, that is when I'll add in the hops. Now, last time when I used liquid malt extract, I rather suspect I scorched it, which led to some of those off flavors. There's no problem really with scorching dry malt extract, which is why I picked it, um, but this has its own problems, typically clumps. If this gets near the steam from the boil, it just gets all clumpy and that's a, a problem as well. Uh, so to avoid that, what I've got here is three quarters of a gallon of water just straight out of my tap and then the remaining quarter of a gallon I have boiled and I'm gonna mix these two together to create some warm water. All right, that's around about 100 Fahrenheit, perfect. So from there, I'm just gonna pour the dry malt extract straight in here and create a slurry of, uh, of DME. It's just all gone in nicely, no clumping. Give it a stir. Okay, not perfectly dissolved, but pretty much there. Now I'm gonna add this, so one gallon, this is the missing gallon, directly into the kettle. Now I've taken gravity readings and there's a pretty big difference between the two original gravities. 1050 for the all grain, 1042 for the extract. And the reason for that I think primarily is the boil off rate in that I had a really vigorous boil with the all grain running on a 240 volt system and a very, very weak boil on the extract system. And as a result of that, I ended up with a lot more wort at the end of the boil for the extract. Nearly four gallons and I was trying to brew a three gallon batch. So I needed to account for that boil off rate, I think, if I really wanted to get these beers closer in gravity. I'm using for my yeast WLP 860. This is Munich Heller's Lager. And I'm gonna be fermenting this one at around 50 Fahrenheit. Last time we tried this wasn't a contest, right? No, Easy. Easy. Zero. Yeah. This time, so we've got, uh, let's see, the extract on the left. Uh, extract on the right. Oh, extract, extract on, on the, the right, right. All grain on the left. On the left, yep. Same glasses this time to address some comments about that. Okay. Um, in both of our cases, the first pour out of the tap had more carbonation, yes. and once the tap had run a while, we didn't have as much. Right, so, so first pour, first pour. First pour, exactly. Yeah. So they carbonated about the same. Exactly. Can you tell visually which is which? Very, very moderately. There's a very moderate difference. This one is a little more golden, yep. which is the extract. Yes. Then the all grain. The all grain is a little paler. It's a little paler, mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe a touch cloudier too. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right about that. I don't know if it's, I don't know if the head on this beer has anything to do with the fact that this one's got a little more head on it. Um, I'm getting a little more aroma off this than I am, I am off this. The extract? Yeah. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, yeah, the extract's got a little more aroma. Let's do the grain first okay. over the extract. We did. Well, it's outstanding. It's a great beer. Yeah, yeah. it's it's an absolutely fantastic beer. Light, um, refreshing, really enjoyable. The test comes now. The test comes now. Yeah. Let's try the extract. It looks a beautiful beer. It is. It's it's a wonderful golden color. Uh, like you said, it's it. this one's got a little haze to it that this one doesn't have. Mm. Um, but I will be surprised if they're not very similar in taste. So, wow. <laughs> 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 the, these are just, these just have, I mean, you can tell that these are the same, um, the same uh, grain bill. But, aside from the stack, fact that this is an extract. Just really both outstanding. Yeah, I, I'm both very, very enjoyable. We could just sit here and enjoy these two beers for the rest of the video and not, not do any tests, but honestly, I, I kind of want to see if I can distinguish between the two. So we've both poured each other. Right, right. I poured yours, you poured mine. Yep. Two of these are the same, one is different. That's correct. Neither of us know the others. Right. Exactly. And you can't tell from looking 
Uh, like the other one, you could, the colors were so different that even the head had a slightly darker color. And this one, you cannot tell, can't tell what's what. If we can identify the odd man and we can identify if it's the extract or the all grain, uh, we, I'd say we, we become beer sommeliers. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. here we go. Wow, I thought I knew the first pass through and then I went back and sipped them all, and now I'm doubting myself. I went through it, and uh -huh. I had no idea at all. Went through it a second time, like, I think I know. Uh -huh. let's, okay, so let's start with the odd man out. All right. You tell me which one is the odd man out, I'll tell you which I think is the odd man out. My odd man out is number two. Number two, okay. My odd one out, I think, is number one. You are correct. And so are you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> all right. Now. It's it, it all comes down to whether you poured me the odd man out is the all grain or the extract mm -hmm. and same with with you for me. So what do you think your odd man out is? Do you think it's the extract or the all grain? <sighs> I really want to get this right. I really want to get this right. Right. Of course you do. I think this is the all grain. You're correct. Yes. <laughs> and I think this is the all grain. Yes, it is. There we go. <laughs> All right, so there was a subtle difference. It is so slight. So slight, but I'm amazed that we both got it right. Is there a chance we actually know what we're talking about? I think that you and I have drank enough beer <laughs> that our palates have become sophisticated enough where we can make these subtle distinctions. I'm, I'm amazed. I'm yeah. Amazed. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> So look, I mean, the, the outcome of this, I would say, I mean, do, would you say you had a preference for for which? Oh no, no, there's no there's no preference between the two. They're they're both outstanding. Uh, the extract and the all grain are both outstanding beers. Both of them are so so close in flavor flavor profile that if you enjoyed either one of them, you would enjoy them both. Last time, we're like, oh, you know, the extract's just not as good. It absolutely can be as good. I cannot wait to see the comments on this. <laughs>